You want to support Roller Martin Unfiltered? Be sure to join our Bring the Funk fan club. Every dollar that you give to us supports our daily digital show. There's only one daily digital show out here that keeps it black and keep it real. It's Roller Martin Unfiltered. By going to rollermartinunfiltered.com, you can make this possible. For the strangest of strange arrests of a Georgia Southern quarterback, Shy Wirtz. Is that right? Shy Wirtz has gotten stranger after body cam footage of the incident was revealed. You can see it on the windshield. That's not burping. I swear to God, that's bird, dude. That's not burping. I swear, I swear that's to God. That's a lot of bird. That's a lot of shit, man. I tried to clean it last night at the gas station. You can still, I can still wipe it off. Wirtz was charged with cocaine possession and speeding in County, South Carolina on July 31st, which led to him being arrested. It was later determined that the substance the police scraped off the top of his car was not drugs at all, but bird poop. Wirtz had been suspended by the team on August 2nd, but was reinstated two days later once the drug charge was dropped. Now see, we giggle, but that brother could have been dead, you know? In he fact, could have been dead, Dr. J. No, he, that, that's, that's exactly the way it goes down. But when you use the words police and intelligence, they probably shouldn't be used in the same sentence, at least mm -hmm. not in this case. You couldn't smell the bird do, but his coach, I think, said something about him that was really important and that we have to just lift up, which is his composure and demeanor uh, during this incident was commendable. A lot of people, I probably would have been cursing, angry, what the, you mean, uh, cocaine. Um, so he really did, that young man, and he's a young man, um, college senior, comported himself wonderfully. But as you say, number one, he could have been dead. Yeah. Number two, his academic career could have been ended yeah. if they just asserted that it was bird poo and never chose to test it. Yeah. They could have gone to court, as you know, and goes to court. But it, he's, they find out it's bird poop. But meanwhile, back at the ranch, he's lost a semester. Yeah. And so the consequences of police stupidity, especially for black and brown men and women, but men more so than women, the consequences are stupendous. Yeah. And we really, and so, you know, I am appealing to police chiefs and others, get your folks some training. Get your folks some sense. I mean, you can't buy sense in a Cracker Jack box, but there's some places you can get it from. These right. folks need some training. That could have been handled so differently. Right, but it's not just stupidity to me, Avis. You know, a lot of these things I see in terms of intentionality and no, just as uh, Dr. Julian just finished saying, it could have gone a different way, but for his demeanor, but these are circumstances where we would have righteous indignation and just cannot afford to. I was just hoping and wishing and had my fingers together saying, please ask him to taste it. Ask him to taste it and then figure out if it's okay. I would have just gotten some very petty pleasure out of that. But, you know, the, it, it, the bottom line is it is a, a serious situation when you have individuals who have all this power that they have with a badge, but they don't have the intelligence that's necessary to go with it. And also, many of them have, I believe, quite frankly, a bit of a power trip that they find yep. themselves yep. on, where they just want to assert their authority, whether or not what they're doing is right. And at any given moment, you're exactly right. It can escalate out of control, and someone can end up dead. Yep. And we know that's more likely to happen to black men than it's likely to happen to others. And so thank God this young man survived this encounter. But I certainly would have gotten some pleasure had that cop eaten some bird poop. Right. The other thing we don't think about, Mustafa, is he could have been doing something else wrong, and they would have used this unjustified mm -hmm. circumstance and this non-so-called drug that they found, and then what if he's got some, some weed? Mm -hmm. You know, what if there's something else that he's not supposed to have? That would have been then a legal stop. I mean, people don't get how police use things that they sometimes know full well mm -hmm. are not accurate as pretext to stop mm -hmm. and search and frisk and detain and arrest men of color. I mean, that is what we see every single day. And that's why you have to know your rights and you have to 
stand your ground in the sense of knowing what your rights are? No, you don't, Mustafa, but I mean, come on, I'll listen to you. No, I well, go back and forth with my, with my yeah. bros about this all the time. Well, what I mean by that is that, you know, if they want to search your car, then you can tell them that they need to go and get the warrant that's necessary for them to get it. And I understand that there are dynamics that play out in that situation. But here's what we should, one of the additional things that we should be focused on. If this was a white gentleman who was driving that car, would they have made the assumption that it was yes. cocaine? Nobody's ever seen a movie where a cocaine dealer had cocaine, you know, on polishing it on his car. <laughs> um, or any of the other dynamics that, that go on in that space. They did this because it was a young man of color and they made the assumption that it could possibly be that substance. And that was going on there. And as the sister said, this is about power. We talk about power all the time, how it plays out. Um, and we have to be very focused on that. But there's another folks who also should have probably taken a moment, and that is the school. So if they went ahead and were going to, and luckily they reinstated him, but they jumped to the conclusion that he must be guilty right. instead of yeah. saying, let's wait until the investigation is completed and then we will make a decision yeah. about what we're going to do. Right, and I think it was Dr. Avis who was saying um, in the last story when they're not, when we're not being seen as human, because that's the training that's needed. It's not police training exclusively. It's sensitivity training. Well, it's, see, um, it, it's, it's really humanity training uh, when you were dealing issue. with black and brown. You have to see a person, not a threat, a person. But... All right, we'll keep you posted on that one, y'all. Thank God we're getting to what seems like a good ending. All right, folks, back to that Roland Park unfiltered video in just one moment. You've heard Roland talk a lot about MarijuanaStock.org because he wants to keep you informed of investment opportunities that make sense. We have all watched the growth of the cannabis industry. A recent report by New Frontier Data estimates the global cannabis market at over $340 billion. That's with a B, y'all. We know that marijuana legalization is sweeping the country state by state. We also know that marijuana has a good cousin, the hemp plant, with a much higher concentration of CBD. That means hemp gives you all of the medical benefits of marijuana without getting you high. Until recently, hemp farming was practically illegal in the United States and heavily regulated by the DEA. However, the 2018 Farm Bill recently passed in Congress, making it legal to grow hemp CBD in the United States and creating one of the largest commodities worldwide. And they need land to, to grow all of the plants. This is not rocket science. It's just an incredible investment opportunity, and that's why our good friends at 420 Real Estate come in. Their business model is simple. They buy land that supports hemp CBD, grow operations, and lease it to licensed, high-paying tenants. That's right. They are hemp CBD landlords, and you can get in on the action. The folks at 420 Real Estate decided to do something special for the Roland Martin family. Originally, the minimum investment level was $500. Right now, you can invest in this crowdfunding campaign for as little as $200. That's right, $200 up to $10,000. Let me recap. This is a $340 billion industry that is still growing, and you can participate with as little as 200 bucks to invest. To invest, go to MarijuanaStock.org. That's MarijuanaStock.org. Get in the game, y'all. Do it now. Now back to your Roland Martin Unfiltered video.